All right, good morning. What is what is still work? What is still? <laughs> Someone's recorders on. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's start again. You're talking about ball security and and all that with Carson and the whole thing. We, we, yeah, we talk about it. We work on it uh, each week. Uh, it's something that, that Coach Taylor Press, you know, uh, stresses uh, even through individual, you know, there's, there's drills that we can do to, to obviously uh, uh, make him more aware of that. Um, and it's something we just got to be, be conscious of. He's got to be conscious of it. He is. Um, and try to uh, eliminate, if not uh, get it completely out of, out of, uh, out of his game and, and our game as an offense. Yeah, you'd like to see just maybe a few times a year, you know, quite honestly, um, from from that standpoint, whether it be a center quarterback issue. Um, you know, we've had some weather games this year, and you can see that. But, yeah, you'd love to be able to at least keep it to a, a manageable size. Nelson, 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 Nelson. 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 injuries, the list Frank go. Correct. And um, will he need surgery? Uh, yes. Is that something that? I think so. Um, uh, he 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 would you know would would want to get it done quickly so he could get on uh, get on the rehab schedule. Nelson, the timeline for that? Do you have a, a yeah, I don't have a rough sense yet on when that would be. Possible yeah. for him to play next year? Yeah, it's still. I mean, it's a long way away. Nelson said that his knee is in a stalemate. Uh, as he said, what is your expectation for whether he can play on Sunday? Uh, we'll work through today, see where he's at. Obviously, um, he hasn't worked, you know, um, the last couple of days. Um, not sure what stalemate means, but, um, yeah, we're still working through it. No, no, it's too smart of a game for me. Checkers is more my speed. Kamu acknowledged that he wasn't up front about the fact that he had a concussion and played through it. What do you do? Well, um, uh, you know, just just so I'm I'm clear uh, with you guys, and, and I'm obviously clear with the team. This goes back to uh, training camp when when we we sit in here uh, as a team and uh, have a medical meeting, and we actually disclose to our players and how when we stress how important it is for our players to, you know, one either self police uh, themselves um, and or a teammate. Uh, you know, kind of say something to to a, to a medical uh, team member of of this importance. Uh, we know how important head and neck uh, injuries are to our league and, and to to the just the person, the player himself, and and, and the well-being of the player. And, and so, from from that standpoint, to to have this come uh, back like this, and and for him to uh, admit what what he what he has uh, said and done is very disappointing. Uh, for me, uh, as a head coach, um, after you know, putting our players through meetings and, and instructing our players, and, and you know, it's not a reflection on the team or anything like that. It's just one guy who made a bad decision, bad choice, and uh, I, I look at it. I, I take football aside, and I, I say, hey, this is this is a well-being issue. I mean, had he maybe got hit again in that game, you know, who knows what could have happened. So. Uh, I'll reiterate to our team again, obviously, the importance of, uh, of, of, of reporting injuries, regardless of what type of injury it is. Um, but uh, I just want you know, him and, and, and the guys to understand that I'm, I'm disappointed in, in this decision. Are there uh, disciplinary measures in this kind of situation, or is that counterproductive? Well, I think what's happened has happened. Um, you know, I'll, I'm going to evaluate some things. and. and I'll I'll visit with Howie and you know and 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 just try to talk through some things if if I'm going to go down that that path. At the same time, Doug, as a, as a former player, you sort of understand where where he was coming from. As you said, I think it was the first play of the game. He didn't want to go. Yeah, out. I mean, you can, but listen, and our game's changed since when, since I played, and and uh, maybe maybe then you know maybe you could, but now. Um, 
there's there's too many things in place, too many protocols, too many um, you know uh, standards that that we as coaches and as players, you know, we're trying to protect our game and and um, you know the well-being of, of every player and. Uh, you know, in a sense, it's a little bit of a selfish act, you know, to take it upon yourself and make that decision when, when uh, you know, he could have gotten checked out right away, you know, and probably would have been cleared to go back in the game, you know, at that point. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm disappointed. Doug, with the uncertainty surrounding Nelson and what happened on Monday when he went into the game light at wide receiver, had some injuries in game, is there any more of a concern this week if you go in there with just well, I, I look at it as nine bodies, uh, you know, with tight ends, runners, and, and receivers. So we've we, we've got everything we got everything covered that way, and and uh, you know we we've got uh, we've got a a plan to the plan to the plan to the plan if if things you know if we lose a guy uh, during the course of the game. So you know it's something that. Um, it's where we are right now uh, as, as, a, as a team, as an offense. Um, guys are working extremely hard. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the guys that get an opportunity. It's, uh, you've seen the improvement with JJ. You've seen the improvement with Greg Ward and Boston Scott coming on now. And you know, um, so I, I'm looking forward to, to watching these guys play. You've seen Rob now for a while, but what have you seen this week in, in your offense? Um, again, just like uh, like Greg when Greg was on practice squad. Robert's been working with our offense uh, even prior to being active, um, and so what I've seen is uh, I've seen a, 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 a bigger physical guy, uh, really good route runner. He's smart. He's played played in games, um, and and a guy that just uh, you know uh, understands understands his role and and what we're asking him to do and the, the positions we're putting him in. So, you know, we've got to be smart with that, uh, with having three young players in there. But at the same time, we're not going to hold back and and uh, and handcuff any any of them. Is there any change in Jordan Howard's status? No. So so at, at what point? And I, and I, I guess you can lump Nelson in here too. I, I know you're kind of gearing up for a potential playoff run. But at what point do you weigh uh, the value of that roster spot compared to the chance that the player could return? Um. Yeah, I mean we're we're kind of getting down here to the end. Obviously, I mean I understand the, the question, but. Uh, I think that you know uh, my my hope is that that uh, they return and return soon, um, so that that uh, we can we can get them back. You know, I, I lean more that way of getting the player back than than trying to free up a spot and then he gets healthy and he can play. So. Doug, Doug, you mentioned you know the nine skill position guys, whatever. Um, right as of right now, like four of them have been on the practice squad. This you know at some point this season, like have you ever can you recall a scenario where? Maybe not on all on one side of the ball, you know. Um, <clears throat> it, it's hard to to think of a of a time. I know we've had to do that, you know, with with say a D lineman or a secondary and an offense, you know, multiple spots, but not maybe on on offense. But um, obviously, been encouraged. You, you saw, I think last you know Monday, you know, a guy like Boston who comes in and and, and plays plays well. Uh, Greg Ward, who has stepped up the last couple of weeks and played well, and so you know it just goes to the it it, it goes to the the credit of again goes back to the coaches, our developmental program, uh, working with these guys on Wednesdays and Fridays, you know after practice to to continue to develop their skill, um, and we coach everybody, you know we coach the practice squad guys and we coach the starters, so uh, it's been a, it's been a credit uh, to the coaches that way too. Now Sean seeding from uh, injury lead now your top two of your top three guys uh, aren't going to finish the season, Sean being out for a very long time, Nelson's been injured. Um, so much promise heading into the year with those three. How do you view what's happened there, um, both in terms of injury, in terms of performance on the field, and how that's really affected the team overall? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, injury is part of the game. Um, I'll start there. And you never know when uh, or you know how injuries are going to affect one your team and or a position group and you know it's just it, it, that's why it goes back to you know for us as coaches we that's why we got to coach everybody you know you never know when a guy might miss the season or he might just miss a few games and you got to get the next guy ready to play but you know for our in, in our case having 
as you mentioned, those three guys, you know, missed time. Now, um, you, 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 you sit back and go, well, you know, I'm not going to make any excuses for it. But, you know, you go, gosh, only if, only if. But I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't let my mind go down necessarily that path. You know, I, I'm focused on the guys that are healthy. I'm focused on the guys that are out there and getting them better because still got, uh, you know, we still got three games, three weeks. Um, and a lot ahead of us. No, and I haven't really, you know, exhausted too much time yet on you know, a lot of research on this. I'm going to wait to probably after the season to, to dive into it a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just seems like this is kind of our injury this year, you know. No, Doug, you always preach next man up. Uh, that mentality. Uh, Mike earlier this week, though, used the word rewarding when you see guys like Austin and Greg and Josh. It's a good word. As a coach, does that give you a little more juice, a little more energy? Younger guys step up sure, the sure. And, you know, um, we always have juice. I always have juice. And, and we're excited for, for our young players who have, been, um, who have been coached along the way, who we know and they've been coached the right way. They're focused on their fundamentals, their details uh, of their job. And, and, then, and then to see them perform in game. And, and, and a lot of times with these young players, they just need the opportunity. Uh, they're, behind, they're behind an Alshon. They're behind a... You know, a Deshaun, a Nelly, whatever it might be. Um, they're behind a Jordan Howard. Um, and, and then when that player's not there, this is their opportunity. And, and, and they're hungry and they want to make the most of that opportunity because, you know, this is, uh, again, they're professionals uh, about their business and their craft and uh, uh, they want to do well. In, in JJ's case, now that Alshon's out, does he go back to exclusively playing the X or do you want Rob Davis there? How do you kind of mix that up? Um, he, he, he actually last week he played more of the Z, the flanker spot. Uh, we kind of keep him at that spot. You know, Rob can go over and play the X. Greg can play the X. Greg can play inside. One thing about JJ, I think with his developmental and his growth, he can play a couple of spots for us. Um, but uh, he'll stay primarily at the, at the Z or that flanker position. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.